This video, we're going to talk about how to use Sokotoa in order to find missing angles in triangles. So the previous video in this playlist talks about how to find missing sides. When we're finding missing angles, we're basically using an opposite or inverse operation. So that means we're going to need to use the inverse button on our calculator. So you will need the, your calculator for this lesson. I'm going to grab mine here. And you just want to double check that it is in degree mode instead of radiant. So the steps to finding missing angles are similar to what we did with sides. We are going to start with the acute angle on the diagram. We're going to take a look for that. We're going to label the hypotenuse opposite side and adjacent side. We're going to figure out what trig function is best used, set up a trig, trig equation. And then the new part that is unique to solving for angles is that we are not going to cross multiply Instead, we're going to be using the inverse button on our calculator and taping in the trig ratio. So I'll show you what that looks like. And then we just round. For our inverse buttons, uh, you'll notice in this piece right here, it says to hit the second button to get the inverse sine cosine tangent. So example, if I want inverse sine, I'm going to hit the second button and then sine. And you'll see it looks like sine to that negative one. That negative one means inverse. All right, let's look at some examples. So number one, we're solving for theta to the nearest tenth. So looking at theta, I know this is my hypotenuse, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. This is going to be a problem that uses sine. And I know that because there's something that's on the opposite side and there's something that's on the hypotenuse side. So I'm really referencing our SOCA-TOA acronym and which one of these three pieces has something with opposite and hypotenuse. That's going to be sine, the SO part. So I'm going to write a trig equation. It's going to say sine of theta is equal to the opposite, which is 11, over the hypotenuse, which is 16. Now, when we were solving for sides, we would then cross multiply here. We are not going to do that in this case. What we are going to do is we're solving for theta, and the way we're going to get it by itself is by doing an inverse operation. So theta is equal to inverse sine 11 over 16. So I'm going to do second sine in my calculator. That's how I get the inverse. I'm going to type in whatever my ratio is and hit enter. And now we just round. We're looking for the nearest tenth, so theta is equal to 43.4 degrees. All right, let's try another. Number two, we're solving for x to the nearest hundredth. So we're starting by labeling our sides. This one looks like it's going to be sine again. So sine of x in this case, so changing up the variable, not theta this time, we're using x is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. To get x, we're going to do inverse sine 12 over 15. It's like we're saying to the calculator, what angle has a sine of 12 over 15? And the calculator is able to give us back that answer. And to the nearest hundredth, I got 53.13 degrees. All right, we're going to look at some more sample problems. Okay, number three, we're finding the measure of angle B to the nearest hundredth. So we're labeling all of our sides. We have a, another example using sine. So we're going to use sine of B is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. To get B by itself, we're going to do inverse sine of that ratio. And then we're going to put this in our calculator. So second sign, type in our ratio. You can follow my calculator work over on the right-hand side. And to the nearest hundredth, the measure of angle B is 33.13 degrees. Number four, looking at theta, here's the hypotenuse. Here's the opposite side. Here's the adjacent side. So this is an example using cosine. Cosine is the ka part, C-A-H, that uses adjacent and hypotenuse. So cosine of theta is equal to 3 over 5. When we do our inverse operations, theta is equal to inverse cosine 3 over 5. And let's calculate that. So remember to get inverse cosine, you hit second, then cosine now. 
and to the nearest tenth, we got 53.1 degrees. Number five, solving for x to the nearest whole number. Here's the opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. This is a tangent example, since opposite and adjacent are being used. So tangent of x is equal to 6 over 10, opposite over adjacent. We're going to do inverse tangent. And to the nearest whole number, I get that x is 31 degrees. Number six, we're looking at angle j. Let's label our pieces. We want to start every problem by labeling the triangle opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And then we're going to pick our trig function. So this is an example with cosine. So the cosine of j is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And hopefully we're seeing the repetition here that once we get the hang of it, it's really just writing the trig equation and then doing our inverse operation. Okay, we're looking for a nearest hundredth, so 35.52 degrees. All right, let's look at two more. Number seven, we're labeling the pieces of the triangle, and this is a tangent example. So tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. Let's do our inverse operation here. And to the nearest tenth, I have 56.3 degrees. All right, and for our last example, here's the hypotenuse, the opposite, and adjacent. So this is going to use sine. Sine, remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, 8 over 17. We're going to do our inverse operation. So second sign, 8 over 17. And we are going to get to the nearest thousandths. So that's three decimal places, 28.072 degrees. Okay, so the general idea when finding missing angles is to write your trig equation and then use your inverse operation in the calculator and round accordingly. Thanks for watching.